Hello everyone, welcome to astrologynewsreport.com. Today is January 5th, 2014. Presenting an alternate view of world events as seen through the lens of Vedic astrology. I'm Ron Berger. And I'm David Anton Savage. Let's take a look at the week that was. Well, Ron, has the Mars major period for the USA finally borne some strange fruit? Or in this case, some magical herb? Something just off the path has caught the deer's attention? Some special grass to nibble on? All right, no need to be so cryptic, David. You are, of course, referring to the fact that the USA's natal Mars, using the astrology chart we have for America, has placed Mars in the nakshatra of Migrashira. The lunar sign Migrashira's symbol is the deer's head and is closely related to Soma, the divine nectar, the drink of the gods, which can give enlightenment or merely intoxication. Migrashila is therefore closely associated with pleasure-seeking. Yes, you and I have speculated in the past about the possibility of marijuana becoming legal in the USA during the Mars major period, and it appears to be coming true. And whatever a planet rules gets activated during its period or sub-period. So in this case, you have the planet Mars as the major period ruler, not only placed in a lunar sign connected with pleasure, but also being the ruler of the fifth house of recreation. That's correct, David. The nation is on the cusp, so to speak, of finally ending its insane policy of treating pot as a Schedule One narcotic. And this has manifested on a new moon, which, as we noted last week, had some interesting dimensions to it. Of course, we are referring to the state of Colorado beginning legal st sales of marijuana for recreational use, with Washington State soon to follow later this year, albeit with somewhat different rules. And you know that once other states get a whiff of the additional tax revenue due to all that smoke... <laughs> they are going to want in on the action. It's just a matter of time before other states jump on board. Okay. All right. Um, over the past month, we have been keeping track of Mars opposite Uranus in the heavens. Mars is the planet of conflict, war, and destruction. Uranus is the planet of sudden events and rebellion. The result is violence, crisis, revolution, and there have been plenty of manifestations of that energy pattern lately. Here's something to support our theory of pre-existing conditions and astrological setups. Case in point, notice the uptick in violence in all the areas already having more than enough of it. Yeah, the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq have all seen a spike in the action with this Mars opposite Uranus. Last Sunday's twin bombings of the southern Russian city of Volgograd certainly qualified as a Mars-Uranus type event. The bombings themselves have precipitated a Mars-Uranus type crisis as well because even though these explosions occurred 400 miles away from the site of the upcoming Winter Olympics, the timing is such that everyone assumes these acts of terrorism and the upcoming international event are very much connected. Yeah, and we will have more analysis on that point in part three of this week's report. The Mars-Uranus combination is a top-notch indicator for accidents, and there was a doozy in a small town in North Dakota last Monday. Two freight trains, one of them laden with crude oil, collided. The resulting fire set off huge explosions, forcing the evacuation of hundreds of residents from the town of Castleton, in North Dakota. And in the unexpected sudden natural disaster category. We have Uranus opposite Mars manifesting as a volcano erupting in Indonesia. Mount Sinabung in the northern end of Sumatra, which sent 19,000 local villagers fleeing for their lives. Volcanic ash covered villages, farms, and trees as far away as 70 kilometers from the volcano. Wow, what's el what else is coming, Ron? Uh, well, we'll be watching. Anyway, uh, and in last week's show, we mentioned how the conjunction of Mercury and Pluto 
could be interpreted as oligarchic control over communications. Pluto, as god of the underworld, signifies that which is secretive and subversive. Combined with Mercury, the planet of communications and equipment suggests something suspicious happening with our computers and smartphones. Yeah, and lo and behold, last week it was revealed that the NSA has actually had a program worthy of James Bond where they intercept shipments of computer technology and insert spyware that allows the agency not only to monitor what the user does with the device, but also to divert searches to NSA-constructed websites like bogus Facebook pages. Every keystroke is captured, and anything you try to encrypt is known to the NSA as well. The NSA didn't deny their program called TAO for Tailored Access Operations. An NSA spokesperson stated, Tailored Access Operations is a unique national asset that is on the front lines of enabling the NSA to defend the nation and its allies. Yeah, and then... Yet another program was revealed called Dropout Jeep, which was designed to pull data off of iPhones, such as contact lists. Evidently, this program has not yet been deployed, and Apple swears that their popular iPhones have not been compromised, as far as they know. But wait, there's more! And courtesy of Edward Snowden, yet another program has been revealed, and this one is taking nearly $80 million of your tax money to develop a quantum computer that could break virtually every type of encryption that guards the files which contain items like banking, medical, or governmental records. Oh boy, mm -hmm. does it ever end? I mean, this is looking like some awful science fiction paranoid nightmare. It's worse than Big Brother. It's a Philip K. Dick novel on steroids, and it's real. We'd better start fighting back now before any nanobots cross the blood-brain barrier and zombify us all into a Borg collective. Okay. <laughs> all right. And so we conclude this week's review of the week. Be sure to click in with us next week.